Hi, everyone. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about fluent kinematics, and I'm going to focus on the velocity field. So we're going to start off with discussing frames of reference, different types of flow, streamlines, and stagnation points. So first off, we have fluids. We're transitioning to fluids in motion. And fluids in motion are characterized by their velocity field. So we have some velocity field that's going in an x, a y, and a z direction. Okay. Um, this velocity field arises in response to gradients of other forms of fluid energy, most notably elevation and pressure heads. We'll talk a lot about that in uh, when we discuss Bernoulli equation. Fluids in motion may be described in two frames of reference, Lagrangian and Eulerian. So Lagrangian uh, is essentially when you are tracking a particle. So this particle is moving and you're keeping track of the losses or gains of that particle as it moves. So for example, the energy transformations taking place in a speeding car are best handled by Lagrangian framework. I also like to think of it as you're taking a walk along the creek and you're following the water particles. Eulerian defines an appropriate size control volume and tracks things entering, leaving the system, and that being stored in the control volume. So this is like watching the particles flow in and out of my field of view. So I have some pictures here, right? So this is again, me walking the dog along the river, that's Lagrangian are me taking a nice little break and watching the river go past me and watching the particles move left to right out of my frame of view. So this velocity vector can actually exist in one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions. So if you have a 3D image here, let's say this is my X, this is my Y, and this is my Z, right? and you have some particle moving, at this point, the particle has some velocity, okay? And that velocity has three components in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. Now, you see here there are some unit vectors here where we're talking about our X direction corresponds to I hat, Y, J hat, and Z, is going to be our k hat. Okay, now the velocity vector is broken into these components, this u, v, w, where u is describing the movement again in the x direction, v is describing the velocity component in the y direction, and w is describing the velocity component in the z direction. Okay, you don't necessarily, this so again, this is a 3D example. You might not have flow in three dimensions. You might have flow going up and down, left, right. So you'd have something like this in two dimensions. Or you might just have flow going to the left or to the right. So you're just dealing with one direction. Okay. So you have to uh, decide how that fluid particle is moving and then break it into its components. It's U, V, and W components. Now we're going to talk about types of flow, where the velocity of the fluid can be expressed by considering its movement along the streamline, so that's what S means, and as it's changing with respect to time, okay? So those are two particular coordinates that we need to consider when we're talking about types of flow. So the first type of flow is usually the easiest to deal with, and that's uniform flow. What this means is, so you can see here we have streamlines. So we're going, moving from left to right, okay? What this pattern is showing is that the velocity is not changing as you move along the streamlines. So this would mean if this was velocity one, velocity two, and velocity three, this means that velocity one is equal to velocity two is equal to velocity three. That is uniform flow. Another type of flow is when we have non-uniform flow. And this is typically what we're dealing with. So again, if I draw another figure of the pipe, 
what you would typically have when you have your velocity profile is at the center line, you would have a maximum velocity. So this would be your V max. And at the edges of the pipe, your velocity would actually be approximately zero. So this is what your velocity profile would look like. So each of these line is a streamline. So this is saying that you would have non-uniform flow, meaning the velocity as you move along the streamlines are not uh, going to be the same. So the change in velocity with respect to the streamline is not going to be zero. Okay. The third type of flow is steady flow. And this means that the velocity is not changing with respect to time. This is a wonderful approximation that actually simplifies a lot of our work when we get into our Reynolds transport theorem. The other side of that in our last type of flow is unsteady flow, which is basically saying the velocity is changing with respect to time. Laminar and turbulent flow. Laminar flow is categorized or described as well-ordered, um, very smooth movement, okay? It generally follows a really beautiful parabolic velocity profile. The turbulent flow, however, has very unsteady flow characterized by lots of cross-stream mixing. So think of it if you have a lot of wakes, eddies. This is similar is if you had like a washing machine or a very fast moving river that has uh, lots of rocks or boulders. So you have some river and then you have a rock. It's essentially moving around that boulder and it's causing all of these, these uh, eddies, these little currents here. So that's what, uh, we would, that's what uh, you'd have turbulent flow. This is an example of the velocity profile for laminar. Again, here is our center line for both pipes, right? Along the center line, you'd still see this maximum velocity, but that maximum velocity is pretty easy to, is easy to predict with our laminar conditions. With turbulent conditions, we actually end up using essentially the average center line velocity and that's because of this it's difficult to get a distinctive uh center line velocity so yes we would essentially take the average next we'll talk about streamlines so streamlines are the mechanism to visualize flow direction. So here's an example. So imagine this is like a swimming pool and at the bottom of the swimming pool, you have uh, a plug, right? You pull the plug. The streamlines essentially help you, help you understand or visualize how that particle is moving from the top of the fluid out through this free jet through the plug, okay? The streamline is the line where the local velocity vector is tangent to the streamline at every point. So it's drawing examples here. So this right here is a velocity vector that's tangential to my streamline. And here, and here, okay? What we would do is we would calculate the slope of the streamline um, in order for us to essentially visualize what that streamline looks like. So you would have your, this, this equation here that relates the x and y component of the velocity vector. So velocity vector is u i hat plus v j hat. So you take these two components and you plug it into this equation and you calculate your slope of a streamline. Here is an example of a solving a 2D velocity field where the velocity field is equal to 6y i hat plus 4j hat where y is in feet. Determine the equation for the streamlines and sketch representative streamlines in the upper half plane. So the first thing we want to do is we want to break uh, the velocity vector into its u and v components. Then we want to calculate the slope of the streamlines using this equation, uh, dy dx over dx is equal to v over u. 
So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our velocity vector is 6y i hat plus 4j hat. So we're going to write our u and v components. So everything in front of the i is going to be our u component, and everything in front of the j hat is going to be our v component. So u is equal to 6y, and v is equal to 4. Just like that. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to write our equation for the streamline. So that's going to be dy dx is v over u, where dy dx is equal to 4 over 6y. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put all of our y's on the same side and all of our x's on the same side. So we're going to multiply both sides by 6y. And we're also going to multiply both sides by dx. Okay, and that's going to give us 6y dy is equal to, that cancels, right, 4 dx. Okay, now we can do a simple integration. So we integrate both sides of the equation, and 6y dy, this is going to be 6y squared over 2 plus some constant is equal to 4x plus another constant, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate my, my y's to the left-hand side and put everything else to the right-hand side. So I'm going to move my constant over. So that's going to be 3y squared is 4x plus constant minus another constant. But we know this is just going to be another constant. Let's call that C naught, okay? So I'm just gonna combine them together. I'm gonna to divide both sides of the equation by three, and we end up with y squared is equal to 4x over three plus some constant, okay? This could also be rewritten as y is the square root of 4x plus three plus C naught, okay? So the problem said that it wanted you to uh, sketch representative streamlines in the upper half plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this form, the square root form, and I'm gonna plug that into MATLAB. So this is an example of using a tool like MATLAB to visualize your plane. So the constants I had were ranging from negative 10 to 10, incrementing by one. And then I just generated a simple loop to loop through those constants to get my y field. So that's what's happening here. So this is going to be generating a y field or a y, yeah, y field for uh, my constants, my inputs here. Okay? So this is an example of using MATLAB as a useful tool. The next subject we're going to be talking about is dividing streamlines, where you have some object that's has fluid, let's say it's air, is approaching it, and that streamline is moving around the object. So there's a few things that happen um, when, this ha when this occurs. So let's say this is an airplane nose, right? And you have some air approaching the airplane nose. Well, as it approaches, I'm going to focus on this line here. As it approaches, it hits this point, okay, and then proceeds to divide around the nose, okay? So it goes around the airplane nose. At the point right here where that airflow hits the nose of the airplane, it actually experiences what's called a stagnation point, which at that very point, our velocity is zero. We have no movement at that very point, and then it gradually begins to move around. So this line here is our dividing streamline until it hits the nose. Once it hits the nose, it reaches the stagnation point, okay? Now, at the stagnation point, 
each velocity component, u, v, and I'm sorry, this is supposed to be w, uh, each velocity component is going to be zero. Let's do an example. So a steady incompressible two-dimensional velocity field is given by here, where you, x and y coordinates are in meters and the magnitude of the velocity is in meters per second. Determine if there are any stagnation points in this flow field. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna again break this equation into our u and v components. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set both of those components equal to zero and solve for x and y. Okay, so let's rewrite our equation. So velocity is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.45 x i hat plus 1.5 minus 0 0.8 y j hat. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is break into our u and, y, uh, u and v components. So u is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.45 x v is 1.5 minus 0 0.8 y okay and then we're going to set both of them equal to zero so that's step one step two set u equal to zero and v equal to zero so 0 0.2 plus 0 0.45 x is equal to zero, which gives me uh, 0 0.45x is negative 0.2, x is negative 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.45. This is going to equal negative 0 0.44 meters. So we do the same thing with v. So then 1.5 minus 0 0.8y is zero, negative 0 0.8y minus 1.5, so that's going to be y is 1.875 meters. So uh, the question asked, um, determine if there is a stagnation point, are any stagnation points in this flow field? And the answer to that is yes, we have stagnation points at x of negative 0 0.44 y, 1.875 meters in the flow field.